well as we get asked at a trade show, so this is a two-way speaker or? Com com that, that is a very, very common misconception. Uh, no, they're not. They're all three-way. Uh, the only thing that we make that isn't an actual three-way is the Titan, the little Atmos uh, Titans. Uh, they are still also concentric, uh, but what you see when you're looking at the tweeter is actually the mid-range and the tweeter. Uh, what benefits you get from that is, again, you don't get constrained waveguide shapes that are basically uni like optimized for one uniaxial plane. You get a very wide dispersion. Uh, you know, that's also great for keeping a uniform uh, frequency response and uniform performance delta as you move around the space. Uh, you don't have to be sitting, you know, like anchored to a sweet spot. Uh, it's just a much more efficient way to do that. Our one of the reasons that we can optimize that is because we can control the geometry of the mid the, the cone for the mid range to make it an optimized like conical waveguide for the actual tweeter but it is actually a three-way. Okay, so first off, why doesn't everybody do that then, if this is better? Yeah, you know, that, that I don't honestly know the, the answer to that question. I think there's people who get married to ideas of, you know, everybody has their, like you get speaker companies who have their, their little calling card of like, oh, this is, you know, we, we do this awesome ribbon tweeter. We do this like certain material for our tweeter and then they get mid range. Know, yeah. Or exactly. Or a mid range or it's, you know, it's, a, it's, it's, it's a long tube inside of a, you know, a cabinet or whatever. And, you know, that's fine. Those are different methodologies, different approaches. I think over the years, like if I think about it, like some of my favorite speakers have always been coaxial the the old tannoy of course the yuri the 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 those like yuri like uh, yeah the nine the eight or nines like those are like all those are have always been some of the like my favorite speakers to like yeah. hear uh i, I kind of dev would probably answer this question better but i kind of want to think somewhere in the back of my head i feel like they just got a bad rap somewhere along the way. And then people are like, oh, you know, they're also not like as nearly as common of a device as far as a, a, a transducer than, you know, a dedicated mid range driver yeah. and a dedicated tweet. I think it's hard to make. And I think, yeah, like you said, make. it's not, you know, you people are, it's not, it doesn't fit into their psyche of what a speaker looks like right. necessarily. So, but, you know, again, the thing about, you know, and this drives me oh my, this drives me crazy when I see this stuff online or you don't know, in like my Instagram for you page it shows the picture of somebody's studio where you know, when you when you put a tweeter and a mid range or a tweeter and a and a low frequency driver in a cabinet you and then you have an, a a a, a waveguide that's a constrained waveguide shape that's meant depending on the geometry of the waveguide to be optimal for off placement, they either sound good like this and not like this, or they sound good like this, but not like this. Right. And then you see people who have speakers that it's like, these are supposed to be laying down horizontally and you have them vertically. Those do not sound good in your room. I guarantee that they just don't. Your, 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 your imaging is like this thin, yeah. you know, your dispersion is nil, like non-existent, you know, so it's stuff like that drives me crazy when yeah. I see and that. Here you can take the speaker and just and rotate it in any plane. Yes, you know, exactly. Assuming you're in a free space right. and it won't, it exactly. won't make a difference. Exactly. It's awesome. Okay. So some advantages um, of using your design, talk to us about what are some reasons that you're going to like it? They just sound really, really good as a speaker, precisely because we took the time to work out uh, a lot of the, the, the things go into material science and all these other things. But again, with the just with the concentric driver, you know, again, they have the uh, immediate benefit of the, the recess tweeter because it's inside the cone, you know, inside the cone. You've got, they sound good. Just, I have people that actually run them in low latency mode and they just leave it in low latency mode. And they're like, I don't know. Like, I just, they still sound really, really good to me here. And, yeah. you know, they do a lot of tracking. So that helps for them, you know, in that respect. But, you know, like, you don't ever switch it to full just to get the extra little, like, thing. The DSPs are like, no, they sound fantastic on their own. So it starts out with the fact that, you know, we set out to make a really 
like what we felt was a really awesome sounding speaker and then we used dsp to take us to like yeah. that last that last gap so again like the the concentric thing makes speaker placement you know great in a room easy you know you don't have to deal with a whole you know you, you can sit close to them. You know, you've, you've said before how you have people get really, really close to the speaker. And I have people that go all the time to ask me about distance from speaker to speaker, distance from the speaker. And my setup at home, I have quasars. I have one of those, like, desks that's one of those, like, similar like those three-bay Sterling desks. Yeah. And my quasars start at the edge of that. And those aren't very deep desks. Nope. You know, there are 12 rack spaces, you know, in front of me and then my monitor. So I'm technically too close to my speaker. Doesn't matter to me. It's like I get the same response sitting that close to the speaker as I do getting up and moving around my room. And, you know, I don't, they're, because of the, the fact that they're so time aligned and the transient response is so tight and the phase linearity is so tight fact is is i don't need the natural sort of throw into a room before it actually like becomes the optimal you know like the 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 sort of optimal distance for the yeah you don't have to wait for right. that front exactly right. so you've got you got two things happening at your mid-range and you've got your high frequency stuff hitting you at the same time yep. in the same place. In the same place, right? yes. Those are the, I think, are super yep. important about coaxial. And yep. then you've done this beautiful thing with the waveguide, so it's a 90 degree dispersion. Correct. So it's so you can rotate that yep. every way you want. You can move in the room, forwards, backwards, left, right. right. You know, I feel like sometimes I step away out of the room and I feel like I can still feel the imaging. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's crazy. Well, you know, it's, it's uh, again, the, the fact is, is it is, Everywhere in your room is now the sweet spot, you know, and the fact is we used to, at, at our old, before we moved into the factory here, at the original place that we were building stuff out of, I remember. we used to have like these, like, like a demo room set up. And I used to tell people, you know, they'd sit in this like open free space. It's like, you're watching, you're looking at the speaker, you're sitting there, like get up and walk through the 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 speaker t raise your hand when you lose high frequency information and all that and most of the time when people raise their hand they were behind the speaker you know and that's not to say that you know, standing behind the speaker you're going to get yeah, the yeah, same you're going to be able to make some eq adjustment no but no one's making eq adjustments behind speakers <laughs> but, i hope not but the fact is it just says that you ha you can be that much closer to your speaker so they work in small rooms they work in big rooms you know obviously they work the bigger ones work in better in bigger rooms than you do in smaller and vice versa. But the fact of the matter is, is you're not bound or or uh, restricted by any, like the, the sort of conventional restrictions that people run into with speakers. And I think a lot of that has to do with, to be honest with you, it has a lot to do with the concentric nature of the, the coax. Makes sense. Awesome. Thanks, brother. Yeah.